bravely going where no one has been before. A crew of six pilots will travel to one of planet Jupiter's moons, inspired by evidence that there is water under the surface and extraterrestrial life. The crew members of the $3.7 billion manned spaceship named Europa One are William Shu as commander, Rosa Dask as a pilot, the chief of science officer Daniel Luxemburg, marine biology science officer Katya Petrova, chief engineer Andre Bloch, and junior engineer James Corrigan. But things won't go as planned. After six months in space, the ship is hit by a solar storm that knocks out the communication between the crew and the mission control tower. Block and Corrigan step up trying to fix the ship and continue the journey. And during their efforts, Block's suit gets ripped, so they must get back on the ship. But while retreating, Block notices that Corrigan's suit is covered with hydrazine, a flammable and highly toxic liquid that smells like ammonia. And if he enters inside like this, he will contaminate the rest of the ship. So, Block will try to take his buddy out of the suit, but while doing this, Corrigan blacks out from a lack of oxygen. As he regains consciousness, he pushes Block inside the ship and moves away. His death will make the crew demoralized, but they must continue their journey to Europa. Even though none of the characters are especially individuated, of the six astronauts, James is the only person even remotely in possession of a personality, so losing him so early in the movie is a bad idea that the scriptwriter should not have done. Back to the story. Fourteen more months have passed, and the ship is finally inside the orbit around Europa. They manage to land safely, even though they will miss the planned target zone. The next thing they do is drill through the ice and put a probe inside. During this, Block notices a strange light outside the ship, but he can't convince the other ones about this. He is not able to record the light, so the other crew members are unsure about this information. However, the team will lose contact with the probe as it is struck by an unknown lighted object. What is characteristic of the movie is its non-chronological order. What prevails is the constant tension, and besides the horror, it isn't a graphically violent film. Well, not much horror is actually shown until the very end, but creepy things happen. Characters die, and their absence is deeply felt. Their full trip inside this silent and deep void in space is covered with obstacles of different natures, technical malfunctions, and human miscalculations. What we can see is that their every step is recorded by the omnipresent cameras and the ship's sophisticated network of display screens. But let's go back to the story. The newest failure will make the team try to find evidence of life using another plan. They will let Petrova collect samples from Europa's surface and Luxembourg will analyze the samples. His research will find a presence of a single-celled organism that confirms that the crew is on the right track. After being busy collecting the samples, Petrova sees some blue, strange light in the distance, so she decides to investigate what's happening and have a better look at it. But this decision of hers will lead her to death as the ice beneath her legs breaks and she falls. But this is not where the problems for Europa's crew end. Actually, it will get even more difficult, and the team will lose another member very soon. Carried by the previous discovery made by Luxembourg, the team decides to go back to Earth and report what they found during the mission. But the ship engines will stop working, and the crew is preparing for a crash. The ship's commander, Shu, will unbuckle from his seat to dump water shielding so he can reduce the speed impact. And remember how I said that the ship previously missed the planned spot for landing on Europa? Well, this time, it will hit the originally targeted landing site. But the crew pays another price, as Shu doesn't survive the impact. And that's not even the only headache that these guys have at this moment. Also, the lander of the ship is badly damaged, and it starts leaking oxygen and losing heat. Europa starts to sink into the ice. This time, Block and Luxembourg put on their suits and will try to make the repairs outside the ship. Sadly, 
This is the last time we see Luxembourg too, as he falls through the ice and dies. Now, it's all on Block, who knows that he has no chance to fix the ship before it sinks, so he decides to fix the communication link to the orbiting mothership, at the expense of turning off the life support systems and managing to realize this idea, he also falls through the ice as the same blue light that killed Petrova before approaches. The whole dying and losing the crew members one by one will make you feel that you don't understand the message that this movie is trying to bring. Actually, two questions were floating in my head. If the movie is advocating for the greatness of space exploration, then why doesn't it bring a little hope to this unhappy tale? Or maybe the hidden message is to discourage space traveling at any cost. But let's not forget that we still have Rosa. She will manage to bring back the communication with the Earth, and luckily, just before the ship starts to sink once again, all the data, images, and samples that the crew collected are transferred through the mothership. And while Dask is anticipating her death, the biggest evidence of life rises in front of her. As she opens the airlock to flood the lander, trying to see the source of the strange light, the water rises to the cockpit, and in front of her is a tentacled bioluminescent creature. Overall, the movie, with all its great visual and photographic power and narrative style, is so much similar to Duncan Jones's excellent debut feature in 2009, named Moon but it also has some weaknesses, such as poor editing and scene selection that give the audience some big confusion and made the movie difficult to follow. In some scenes, you will see that the director has chosen quantity over sustained quality, so he missed the opportunity to give the audience the right focus and made the movie's integrity a little bit thin. After the appearance of the tentacle creature, we can hear Dr. Samantha Unger's narrator's voice saying, in those final moments, knowing communication had been re-established, Rosa chose to open the airlock. I got the call at 3 a.m. telling me that communication has been re-established. By the time I got into our mission control, our servers were flooded with images of our crew. Our mission had finally come back to us. In the end, Dr. Samantha, who by the way narrates the whole story of the Europa 1 mission throughout the movie, takes our attention once again on the blue lighted creature, and she concludes that they finally know that the universe is far more strange and far more alive than they thought. The crew of Europa changed the fundamental context in which all of humanity understands itself, she says. My conclusion after watching this movie and after reading some of the critics is that the Ecuadorian director, Sebastian Cordero, besides some weak signs of the movie that I mentioned before, still managed to keep things consistent and elegant, and even streamlined. Even though this movie has been very underrated in the past years, it has a unique beauty, and that's Cordero's simplicity of its approach. What is even more fascinating is Cordero's determination to maintain calmness. Even when the astronauts one by one begin to grasp that the outcome of their mission will not be as they planned, they still take risks and make sacrifices on each other's behalf. This shows the greatness of these characters and the brilliance of the director and the whole team that worked on the movie.